Recently, several people have asked me how I get robot models into Blender in order to animate them, so I thought I'd make a quick tutorial on the process that I use. The first step is to model your robot using the CAD software of your choice. Autodesk Inventor makes it easy for me and gives me the exporting tools I need, but SolidWorks and Fusion should have analogous tools. Make sure to color your robot before exporting it if you want to do so, as doing the, this once the model gets converted into a mesh is somewhat tricky. You can easily edit textures and change colors after you import into Blender, but if two C channels are the same color before you export them, it is remarkably hard to color them differently from each other. You can change the color of components by going to the Tools tab, going over to Appearance, and there is a large library of two different colors you can choose from. If you are looking for still shots, you can export the assembly directly as an OBJ file. If you want to be able to animate the robot, however, it's a little more complicated. Blender has an easy way to split a mesh into loose parts, which will split any exported robot assembly into its component parts, but it does not discriminate. When it says every part, it means every part. It is a substantial amount of work to regroup the likely thousands of pieces the motors and wheels will be split into. That's why I recommend doing the splitting yourself before exporting. The robot should be broken down into a handful of pieces that need to move independently of each other. For example, pieces could include the chassis frame, all of the wheels and gears, the lift, and the claw. The smaller the number of parts in a group, the easier it is to just take care of splitting it up inside Blender itself. To export in pieces, use the shrink wrap tool. Selectively exclude and include parts in order to get the portion of the robot that you want. Once you have shrink wrapped the component, make sure to turn off surface bodies and then export as an OBJ file. Repeat this process for all components. After you have exported all the different parts, open up Blender. It is helpful to rig the robot in a blank project. One by one, go File, Import, OBJ, and select the components. You can't select multiple components at once. After all the parts have been imported, it's time to start rigging the robot. The first thing to do is select the part with all of the wheels, gears, and things that spin. Hit Tab to enter edit mode, and press A to select everything. Then hit P to separate by loose parts. Hit Tab again to return to object mode. Now you can go through and group things together. On each of the components, you should also set the origin to the geometric center of the object to allow it to rotate properly. The biggest thing when it comes to rigging the robot is to make sure that all parts that move when something else moves are parented to each other. The chassis frame should be the parent of most components on the robot, however something like the claw should be the child of the driven lift stage, which should in turn be a child of the chassis. It is also sometimes helpful to add empty objects as parents to group things together, such as the wheels. The next step is to add drivers to the wheels and gears. These make it so that you can rotate the whole drivetrain just by animating one wheel, which saves a lot of time. Open up the driver menu for a wheel. You do that by going over here, right clicking on the axis that you want to change. We want to spin on the X axis. Open up the driver menu, click add driver. And you're going to want to select the front wheel on the side. So, you open up the dr driver editor, select the front wheel, and set that. Just copy it. You want to copy the X rotation. So, when you rotate this, it rotates that in kind. And then you want to do this for all of the wheels and all of the gears on the drivetrain as well.
Make sure to keep in mind gear ratios and the direction that gears move. You can use that equation bar to reverse the way things move. So that one needs to go negative. Now you can see that when we rotate one wheel on one side, all of the wheels and gears on that side rotate in kind. So instead of having to animate each and every one of these individually, they all rotate together. Next, any mechanical subsystem should be set up to move properly. Make sure to set the origin of the lift pieces to their actual centers of rotation. You can do that by moving the 3D cursor, moving it to the center, object, set origin, 3D cursor, now we'll rotate like that. Do the same thing on this one. You can use a copy rotation constraint on this upper piece here to copy the rotation of the bottom. And now they rotate together. Anything at the end of the four bar lift also needs to be set up to uh, have some special rotation constraints. This, this claw frame here, which is the parent of all the other stuff on the top of the lift, needs a limit rotation constraint because rotation of 90 degrees so we want to set this to ah um, before we do that we need to set the origin to where it rotates on to we need to set the origin to where it rotates on the object that it's the parent that it's a child of. Origin 3D cursor. And now, if we set this to lock it at 90 degree rotation, and rotate this, the whole lift moves as we would expect a 4 bar to. Any other subsystems on the robot that rotate should also have their origin set to the center of rotation. So for example, this piece here should have its origin set at the center of rotation on the hinge. And now it can rotate properly. Pneumatics are somewhat complicated to rig. The easiest way I have found is to make sure that the origins of the cylinder and piston are set properly. This one needs to be at the rotation center up here. This is an empty object that is just set to be the parent of all of this. Same at the bottom. And it is set up with its origin at the center of rotation for the air cylinder. And w what I found the easiest thing to do is to use a pair of track 2 constraints and have these track to each other. Now, when we set this piece up to rotate properly, it rotates here. The pneumatic should move realistically. Items like chain are a bit harder to configure. There are several other good blender chain tutorials out there, and VEX chain works no differently. Watch one of them if you absolutely need to animate the chain. If you don't need to animate your chain as sprockets, you can include them in one of the other parts that you exported and leave them as is. If you do want to animate chain, don't export the chain loop as a component into Blender. You can also choose to make the robot look a little more realistic if you choose to. Some ways that I like include 
adding an image to the brain screen. This requires the Images as Planes add-on, adjusting robot textures, and making the radio and motors glow red. After you're finished setting up the model, you can then copy the objects into whatever scene you choose. I posted a model of the tipping point field to the VEX form at the start of the season, which I'll put a link to in the description of the video. After you set it up, the robot can then be animated using keyframes, just like anything else in Blender. There are many other methods to get VEX robots into Blender, this is simply the one that I prefer. I hope this video was helpful, and feel free to leave any comments or ask any questions you might have.